Hello sir, I am Praveer Prakash and my seminar topic which I have chosen is laser testing methods. So laser testing methods is one of the non-destructive methods that are employed to check the damages and all. So as you can see in the figure, the laser is generated at the center and it produces shear and longitudinal waves and surface waves also. So it is used to inspect the internal defect that are present and it gives the size and the distribution of the defect and it is also useful because it is not harmful for human that's why it is it is used widely the requirements for producing lasers are that it requires acoustic coupling between piezoelectric transducer and the test surface the problem is that it cannot be applied so that the problem it creates a problem that it cannot be applied at complex shapes and a hot environments or in fast moving components so basically there are three techniques in laser testing first is holography second is shearography and the third is poly profilometry so laser testing method is uh, an inter interferometry imaging method and in the mid 80s it got the it got the acceptance so and with the increase of the composite material that were used at that time gave it also a boom to it and uh, it usually uh, recognizes the fracture at critical places and some de defects such as deforms and delamination so that that that's why it was used for checking the defects in aircraft missiles and uh, marine composites also so laser testing methods and other method and DT methods such as thermography and ultrasonic methods were highly developed at that time and they were also cost effective so here are the basic advantages and the disadvantage of using NDT so the uh, the main advantages are that it can be used for weld tubing brazing and for every like aluminium parts tube tube blades and disc the specimen can be reused also the it can be used for composite also and uh, it can it is used for all shapes like for aerospace and marine structures and also for automotive components the disadvantage are that it requires pre-cleaning and we have to decontaminate the surface and very tight and shallow defects are difficult to find and to use NDT we require a high level of training and additional certificate also the people who are using they need to have a good degree and have need to have a good knowledge of that plus the NDT uh, instrument are initially very expensive to buy so the first method is holographic method and the holograph to understand holography we need to understand that the figure shown over here the laser that produces a beam and then it is passed to a beam splitter which splits the beam into two parts one the two beams are then uh, passed on to mirrors and then by the beam expander they come into contact with each other and produce an, uh, produces an object so one wave front can be recorded and the subsequent reconstructed without the presence of the original wave front and when they are reconstructed they form a recording so it was fairly a uh, recent technique only and it originated in 1949 so holographic interferometry is an actually as an extension of holographic method and it is used in engineering field for various help and th this tech this distinct technique of holographic interferometry which actually enables to uh, to produce a very accurate surface displacement so uh, the holographic method that is an NDT method essentially measures the deformation on the surface and it is very sensitive to detect the substructure surface and uh, internal defect in metal and composite specimen also and in NDT technique that test sample in the interferometrically compares the sample after it has been stressed or it has been loaded so it the flaw can be detected if the stressing of the object it creates a enormous deformation of the surface around the so here in the picture you can actually see that what hap what actually happens so in the holographic method the laser produces actu uh, actually what I have already told the laser produces and uh, 
the beam splitter splits the beam and then it reflects it get reflected from the specimen and then it forms a uh, on a holographic plate it forms the fringes and the fringes gives the pattern and from the pattern we can understand what are the deformation and we can get the result from that so the next method is shearography method which is also known as speckle pattern shearing interferometry it is you it is actually very similar to holographic method it uses uh, coherent light uh, or coherent sound wave to provide the information for different material and in this it measures the strain it measures strain to determine the value determine the uh, deformation and all uh, it can be done in composite and metallic plates and depending on the meta material strength and depth of the defect shearography can detect most discontinuity that occurs in a composite structure such as despond crack cores etc shearography actually offers a specific advantage of interferometry that a full field displacement gradient sensi sensitivity using an optical uh, configuration inheriting most resilient to environment disturbance or vibration that it means that actually that it is very resistant to the environment disturbance so it gives a very accurate result and uh, the technique is electronic speckle pattern tech uh, interferometry so the working of shearography but before going to that the basic difference of holography and shearography is that holography is proportional to the actual displacement of the surface due to the external load applied to the structure whereas the shearography fringes are related to the slope changes of the surface now the working actually uh, what you can you can see the figure over here so the optical roughness of the object under the in investigation is illuminated with a laser light so that speckle pattern is formed the speckle pattern th is imaged to the shearing device which is coherently combined with the speckle pattern with an identical but laterally displaced version of that the image is then recorded before and after of the loading event and the correlation of that image results in a fringes pattern so the phase of the fringes pattern contains the information of the displacement derivative of the surface and to quantify the measurement of the displacement of the phase distribution across the uh, across the image across so the image is needed to be reconstructed so what happens is that if there is a deformation and the light is passed through it then there will be a, a phase difference in it the uh, the pattern fringes fo formed before the deformation and after the deformation there will be a phase difference in it so the light scatters and there will be a change in the intensity of the each speckle so comparing both the images we will actually get what where the defects are actually you can see in the figure shown here it there are fringes formed over the defected area so we can locate the magnitude and the displacement gradient of that so there are basically two methods that are used in this shearography first is outplane displacement gradient method and the second is inplane displacement gradient method so the next method is profilometry it is actually a technique to extract the tropical data that is the surface data and it can be done with single point or line scan method or with the full 3d sca uh, scan method so the purpose for profilometry is to get the surface morphology and the step heightness and the uh, surface roughness and uh, there are two methods basically they are categorized into two methods that is non contact type and contact type now as we are focusing on non destructive tests so here are few non contact profilometry methods basically they are divided into three methods optical method focus detection method and pattern projection method in foc in uh, optical method there are few like vertical scanning interferometry or phase shifting interferometry in focus detection method that is focus variation critical angle and pattern projection method there is moir fourier pro uh, profilometry and all so here is the working principle of profilometry uh, here the light source is split it by beam splitter into two parts like first one goes to the camera and second one to the test specimen then it is reflected back and then it is merged together to give an interference image 
so in the interference image you can see that there is dark and light uh, bright fringes which gives the height of the surface roughness so as i have already mentioned that light beam is splitted into two parts by the beam splitter and the one goes to the reflected from the refract and the other goes to the reflective one so the so constructive and destructive interference occur which forms dark bands and light bands known as interference fringes the optical difference are due to the height variation of the stress specimen uh, which is actually the surface roughness and all so the constructive interference that are lighter and the destructive interference are darker so here are the instruments that are actual instruments that are used in the three different methods that are holography shareography and polyphrometry so these are the reflective software i have got the information about the laser testing methods thank you